Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe to fly further, faster, and higher next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Carol Danvers, the big gun of the Avengers, and yet another in our series of Z Fighter types. I know we've made quite a few of these, but hey, we've also made plenty of edgy weapon people, plenty of big brain magic dorks, and plenty of giant rage monsters. Z Fighter is just another archetype, and eventually we're gonna find a way to make it work in D&D. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to take to the skies. You are a premier pilot, after all. Next, we need to load ourselves with superhuman strength, blasting through spaceships like we're a laser. Finally, we'll grab some lasers, in case you don't want to rip through a spaceship with your bare hands. For stats, we'll be using that standard point buy from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that you watch your multi-classing minimums. Strength, constitution, and charisma are all Danvers' specialties, so let's make sure that those are all a solid 14. Dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom can take a back seat, but not too much of a back seat. Set them at 10. That way, we don't have any negative modifiers. Even if we don't teach a college course on noticing things while juggling, that would require better dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom obviously. Key difference for Carol from the other Z Fighter builds. She isn't from space. She's just a lady who's good at flying planes. But since I'd rather have plus two in one stat than plus one in two, we'll use custom lineage. I'm sure I'm the first person to notice this, but custom lineage is basically variant human. Take the tough feat for your feat of choice, giving you plus two HP every level you get, basically giving you plus four constitution. Buff your strength to literally get plus two strength. That's just how that works. Grab persuasion for your skill of choice and take the sailor background for athletics and perception proficiency. I know planes aren't boats, but hear me out, skyboat. Or if your DM doesn't have air vehicles in their game, just normal water vehicles, nothing wrong with that. We'll kick things off as a fighter, there's nothing wrong with that either. Fighters are cool, they get two skills from the fighter list, like insight and intimidation, to figure out how to best flex on your enemies. Punching them in the face is generally considered a pretty solid flex, so scoop up the unarmed fighting fighting style, letting you deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with unarmed attacks, 1d8 if you have two free hands, and 1d4 of damage per round to creatures you have grappled, now they can't move and their throat will be crushed bad day for them you also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest you are from the 90s you gotta trumbo the wumba second level fighters get action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest you're pretty used to doing the work of two avengers this will help you get that insane work ethic going it's honestly kind of a problem for you take a short rest every once in a while now that we're a stellar soldier we need to become an interstellar one like i said when we started carol didn't start off with superpowers she gets them from marvel or space stuff exploding or the tesseract it changes a lot but since it's always coming from some sort of space force celestial warlock will work you get the light cantrip for free to see in the dark with your dumb human eyes sacred flame once you toss some light at a creature forcing them to make a dexterity saving throw if they fail they take 1d8 radiant damage and they get no benefit from cover no evil shall escape your sight wait that's the wrong light based former pilot space cop my bad you also get healing lights a pool of d6s equal to one plus your warlock level that you can give your allies as a bonus action as long as they're within 60 feet of you you tend to be within 60 feet of yourself and have a bit of a healing factor though it could also work to bolster your allies morale the carol core is pretty strong you also get regular cantrips from the warlock list eldritch blast is the classic that deals 1d10 force damage with a ranged spell attack radiant is more your speed but i won't judge you if you want the best cantrip in the game thunderclap is great for some get off of me energy forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures within five feet of you failing that they take a d6 of thunder damage for a massive aoe stomp for your first level spells guiding bolts is a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 radiant damage and gives the next creature attacking the target advantage on the roll with action surge that creature can be you expeditious retreat lets you down as a bonus action for 10 minutes we can't fly just yet but you can at least blast forward on the ground second level warlocks get invocations special gifts from whatever gave you your powers in this universe armor of shadows lets you cast mage armor on yourself at will making race seat 13 plus your dexterity when you're not wearing armor you have the strength for plate you have proficiency with plate you can just wear plate but carol where's a flight suit when can i make a z fighter with heavy armor android 18 android 18 that'll be good. Agonizing Blast lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blast attacks for some beams to deal a little bit more damage. For this level spell, Comprehend Languages lets you understand all spoken and written languages for an hour. A translator is pretty useful when your jurisdiction is 
the end of the entire galaxy. Third level warlocks get a gift from their benefactor, and per MCU canon, you've got your flurkin from Marvel, so packed with the chain it is. This lets you cast Find Familiar, a spell that makes a little spectral animal. It can also be a pixie, a pseudo dragon, quasit, or sprite, though kitty cat works best for your little abomination. You can cast touch range spells out of the familiar, but mostly use it for scouting. Your Chewy is kind of just a cat, or your goose is a cat. I don't know why they changed the name for the movie. I liked Chewy better. Anyway, you can grab second level spells, Shatter Force is a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, and it's very good at breaking inorganic materials. Blasting through walls is pretty cool, or you can just blast the baddies with concussive force. Fourth level warlocks, get an ability score improvement, get your charisma up for better space powers. This is kind of an Ikea paladin, which is a paladin you get from multi-classing fighter and something lasery. For this level spell, Flaming Sphere, creates a ball of fire that you can move 30 feet with your bonus action when a creature is within five feet of it they have to make a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 fire damage half as much on a successful save it's a sphere that you can steer and you're pretty good at steering fifth level warlocks can learn third level spells like fly giving a creature a flying speed of 60 feet per round for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration unfortunately you're not going to be able to get concentration free flight like the other z fighter types but you'll get some other stuff that's actually going to work out better we'll talk about what's better and worse at the end of the video you can also grab another invocation here repelling blast lets you push creatures 10 feet when you hit them with an eldritch blast nobody pushes you around you push people who push other people around and to quote a 90s jam i'm sure you're fond of you push it real good we'll fly back to fighter now letting you choose a martial archetype battle master works pretty well if you want to lead the a force to victory you get four superiority die which are d8s that you can spend on three maneuvers commander strike lets you use your bonus action to give an ally an attack as a reaction and they get to add your superiority die to the damage pushing attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature failing that they're pushed 15 feet back if they're large or smaller i have a little homebrew rule where if a pushing force makes someone hit a wall i count it as falling damage but you don't have to it's just fun for me goading attack lets you draw five forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature failing that they have disadvantage on attacks against creatures that aren't you not everyone on the squad is as bulky as you black widow is just like an acrobatic lady you're also a student of war giving you proficiency with a type of artisan's tools and you can't be the strongest avenger without calligraphy supplies that's infinity gauntlet levels of power four level fighters get an ability score improvement charisma should probably be your top priority with your lasers and blasts still being better than punching for a little while actually for a long while kind of forever that's an issue i'm not sure i'll or fix with a z fighter generally when you're gishing you want to pick spells that buff you as a fighter and picking spells that deal radiant damage doesn't really do that it just means that radiant damage ends up being better than punching they sort of just being two characters stacked on top of each other anyway fifth level fighters get an extra attack when you punch twice with your action or up to four times with an action surge that's a marvelous speed six level fighters get another ability score improvement cap off your charisma here for supernova levels of laser action we'll fly back to warlock now six level celestial war Warlocks get Radiant Soul, giving you resistance to radiant damage, and when you deal radiant or fire damage, you can add your charisma modifier to one damage roll per round, which honestly isn't better than Agonizing Blast. But if you find something vulnerable to radiant damage, it could be nice. For this level spell, Daylight creates a 60 foot radius sphere of light that dispels magical darkness and also helps you see for an hour, no concentration required. If you're fighting in a cave, this should work pretty well. I'd actually say most of the Avengers don't have dark vision. Kind of a major weakness for the squad, actually. Seventh level warlocks can learn fourth level spells sickening radiance forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 30 foot radius sphere dealing 4d10 radiant damage and putting a level of exhaustion onto them if they fail hangs out for a minute so if you can keep pushing your foes back into it you can really wear them out you were already more tenacious than your enemies but now you have a laser that makes fighting you wear them out faster for this level's invocation eldritch spear makes your eldritch blast range 300 feet so if you want you can just fly above them and rain down some serious suppressive fire 8th level warlocks get another ability score improvement we used fighter levels for charisma so it's only natural we use the warlock levels for strength warlocks are the strength based class after all for this level spell counter spell automatically shuts down spells of third level or lower but since you're a warlock who's always going to be casting this spell at the highest level slot you have it'll be fourth level spells right now and fifth level spells next level you can shut down higher level spells with a charisma check of 10 plus the spells level use this to get a semi level of invincibility with incoming fireballs being slightly less than an inconvenience ninth level warlock get fifth level spells flame strike creates a column of light with a 10 foot radius and 40 feet of height forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside dealing 4d6 radiant and 4d6 fire damage to those that fail have as much to those that succeed this basically turns you into a living death star but you know like a nice 
Death Star for the good guys. For this level's indication, Trickster's Escape lets you cast Freedom of Movement on yourself once per long rest for free, meaning nothing can slow you down, paralyze, or restrain you, and you can break out of non-magical shackles with five feet of movement. Just take the time to make sure you actually get the shackle off and don't have to fight through a ship of scrolls with your hands tied. That would be kind of silly. 10th level Celestial Warlocks get Celestial Resistance, giving you temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level after you finish a short rest, and up to five creatures get half of your Warlock level plus your Charisma modifier and temporary HP as well. So give Wasp, She-Hulk, Kamala, Spiro, and Mondale some extra health. It should cover the whole party. 11th level Warlocks get a Mystic Arcanum spell, which is a 6th level spell you can cast once per long rest instead of on a short rest. Tasha's Otherworldly Guys lets you unlock the binary form, giving you plus 2 AC, your attack rolls become magical, and you can use your spellcasting modifier instead of strength or dexterity for those attack rolls. You get 40 feet of flying speed, immunity to poison and fire damage, or radiant and necrotic damage, as well as the poison condition or charmed condition. All of that lasts for a minute depending on your concentration, but you should have things wrapped up by then. 12th level warlocks get another ability score improvement since otherworldly guys lets us use our charisma for our punches anyway we might as well grab some more constitution. Dexterity would help your low AC but I'm just gonna assume that you're ignoring the flavor and putting her in plate mail. Besides it's not like Carol doesn't get hit she just sort of doesn't care. For this level's invocation gift of the everlasting ones lets you heal the maximum amount of hit points you would whenever your familiar is within 100 feet of you. With healing light that means that you can basically constantly be regenerated generating at a solid level, and with second wind, you'll heal 16 HP automatically. You're not allowed to be an Avengers captain if you can't do this all day, that's actually a job requirement. 13th level warlocks can learn a 7th level arcanum spell, investiture of stone might seem a little weird, but it actually works pretty well for Carol. You get resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. You can create a small tremor in a 15 foot radius, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside and knocking them prone if they fail. You can ignore difficult terrain, and you can move through stone without destabilizing it. I think this is supposed to be some like earth bending rock melding stuff but blasting through rubble works fine for me our capstone is the 14th level of celestial warlock for searing vengeance meaning the first time you hit zero hp instead of rolling death saves you can just stand back up with half your hp and deal 2d8 plus your charisma modifier and radiant damage to creatures within 30 feet of you that you are angry at blinding them for a round as well you can only use this once per long rest but it pairs really well with some stuff we're going to be talking about soon before we get to that though how does this compare to some of our other z fighters well this one has a lot more hp since we used fighter which has a higher hit die than monk and warlock which has a higher hit die than sorcerer your at will energy blasts are also much better as well with extra damage on sacred flame from celestial warlock and eldritch blast is the best cantrip in the game by far after you put agonizing blast on it finally battle master helps you actually deal enough damage with your punches to make them kind of useful not really eldritch blast is still better for issues all of your flight options require concentration so you can't get airborne and put another buff on yourself you're also using warlock slots which means that you'll be fighting better in short bursts rather than long drown out stuff Finally, we didn't get Sunburst, which is the best radiant damaging spell in the game. But enough about comparing this to other builds, how viable is this build on its own? Well first, you're incredibly durable. With around 200 HP, amazing self-restoration, including the ability to just give yourself 100 more HP when you should be rolling death saves. You've also got awesome beams that pair really well with a flying speed, meaning that you can just hang out in the sky and spam Eldritch Blast on anyone who can't get airborne. Finally, you're a great leader with extra HP for your allies every day, healing options, and maneuvers to help them be a force to be reckoned with. A little pun there. For weaknesses, your AC is bad if you're not using plate armor, capping at 15 after the plus two buff from otherworldly guys. Just put on plate armor. You have no reason not to. Your flurkin is also really flurkin frail with just one HP, meaning that all that extra self healing goes away as well as soft kitty cuddles. Finally, dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are bad stats to dump when you're flying through space. Saving throws could be a serious problem. But how bad can it really be? If they knock you down, you get back up. If they kill you, get back up anyway. Even with all of your cosmic powers, your biggest strength is your determination to finish the job. Just make sure you're letting the team rest up every now and then. It would be rough if one of them went rogue. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.